Welcome back, MTG Joe here. The season has just resetted. We should be in Mythic Top 1200 with like 10 minutes left. I was in the 700s. Last night I played a game. I was a thousand and change playing against 1075. Won the game, went to 375 and coasted in. Uh, so exciting. We should be, being, be able to play in the tournament uh, to qualify for MCQ this month. Um, so we'll figure out a deck to play there. But now we're at the time where we can play a bunch of fun decks, try out some new strategies that haven't been explored yet. Uh, and this one is a Abzan Black, Green, White uh, with a tiniest splash of red, literally one mana symbol. Um, it's a mutate deck. So what we're trying to do is assemble a giant creature with a bunch of abilities and have your opponent scroll down the text box. Uh, yep. So basically what we're trying to do is kind of abuse a couple cards. And the way we want is Auspicious Starix. Uh, whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library. You basically exile, X per, uh, exile cards until you exile X permanence, where X is the number of times it's been mutated. And then put them on the battlefield. Everything in our main deck is a permanent. So basically for every time it's mutated, flip the top card of your library, put it into play. Uh, so it's kind of Genesis Wave. Uh, you have stuff like uh, Nethroi, Apex of Death. Um, this is a card that you can use to mutate and get a bunch of creatures back from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, we have Snap Decks. Uh, so although Mardu and its casting cost, its a mutate cost only contains... Uh, with the hybrid, you can play Black, White, White. Uh, whenever you mutate, it deals for damage to creature or planeswalker and you gain four life and then we have kind of an assembly of other mutators and things we can mutate onto of note remember when you are mutating you cannot mutate onto a human and uh, we're using umari as our companion so our main board is entirely creatures it's a cost reduction spell um, so we have this to reduce the cost of our mutate and our creatures a Boreal Grazer is to early ramp, but also it can be mutated onto, so it's an early drop uh, that we can play. Stone Coil Serpent is something we can mutate onto. It is um, pro stuff like Clarion, Teferi, Bounce, so you don't get reset that way. Uh, also, when you mutate, the counters stay, so you basically just get whatever the base creature that you mutate onto it, plus all the counters. It also, if you depending on how you stack it, could get around stuff like Elspeth Conquer's Death. Uh, a couple Essence Symbiote I want to try out. Uh, whenever another creature you control mutates, put a 1-1 counter on that creature, you gain 2 life. Uh, Fiend Artisan is similar to Stone Coil where he gets the base bonus. Could also help us tutor for certain things in our library. Uh, Necro, Necro Panther is something I want to try out. It can basically, when it mutates, you get back any of these from your graveyard to the battlefield. You're not really going to be getting Stone Coil Serpent, but basically any of these come back. Um, Insatiable Hemorrhage is basically almost like a uh, Grey Merchant of Asphodel, but for Mutate. Uh, opponent loses X life, you gain X life, where X is the number of times this creature has been mutated. Uh, you have uh, Dirge Bat, which is basically a hero's downfall when you mutate. One Aegisaur for artifact or enchantment removal. Migra Migratory Great Horn. Um, so I had a game where I went Grazer on one into uh, Great Horn on two, and then basically just was dropping big creatures afterwards. So it's a nice ramp in the deck. Uh, so you'll see that we are playing a higher number of basics than you normally see in a three color deck. And that pretty much runs it through. Uh, mana base wise, we have the Trinome. I also have two of the Mardu Trinomes. Uh, that will allow us to hit red occasionally. Um, one thing that we may want is in testing is see if this is better served as Paradise Druid. Um, so that's something we'll test out. Um, got a couple castles in there as well. Sideboard, we can go to a more traditional Abzan like mid-range list. Um, so we get rid of Umari as our companion. We have Cage for like Winona or Lurus style decks. Agonizing Remorse versus Control or like y Yorion decks. Cry versus Aggro, Mythos is Catch All Removal, and then two Vivians for the Grindier matchups where the card advantage would be useful. So we'll try this out. Plat Tier 4 is where we will start. 
And let's see how this does. I got a couple I'm working on, a green black henge, a black white knights list with uh, Mothra, or uh, Brood Moth. So got some decks in the queue, we'll play them out. Uh, same if you are looking for any sort of budget content. Uh, let me know if there's any decks. I've done a few so far, but if there's any kind of idea or themes you'd like to see, and I could take a stab at those. Um, and that pretty much takes it in. As always, if you do enjoy the content, if you can drop a like or follow on YouTube. Uh, keeping this hand, I'm going to mulligan. Opponents on Yorion. You know what? I might keep this and try. Yorion's a slower deck. So even just going Serpent into Serpent. The Pro Teferi and like Uro will be good on these. I do have some arena community codes uh, thanks to the uh, the challenges that Wizards has. So I'm going to download those. I'll put a post onto YouTube and uh, we'll just randomly select names from people who comment and then we'll go from there. Also, if you're following on Instagram, I have another subset that I'm giving away there. There's a post there. <clears throat> so this is good where Stone Coil doesn't get bounced by Teferi. I think we just attack to fairy here <clears throat> no more game. and then play out a second one. This hand's been a bit slow to be honest. Drawing all our six mana mutators and the ones that require double white hasn't been the best. I could go Mari next turn if we draw a land. Hopefully we don't get swept here. Don't worry, <clears throat> I got this. Um... Just go to attacks first, see if they have a board wipe. Yeah. I'm actually just gonna concede here. Missing the land drop, we're far behind. I think we just go, don't show them what we're on. <clears throat> so I'm gonna get rid of Amari. I think it's pretty bad in this matchup, to be honest. It just gets hit by a bunch of stuff. Um. Essence Symbiote doesn't seem that good. Fiend Artisan can get pretty big. Snap decks can deal with Planeswalkers. But overall is probably too slow. So let's get rid of that. I like Nethroid on the top end. Probably get rid of... I still like Grazer to get ahead. But maybe on the play, we take them out. Could probably get rid of Necropanther. And then maybe do it like this. So then we have, we're cutting down quite a few of our mutators. But I think overall we're okay. This is a matchup where we don't want to overcommit. I think we just run it like that. The deck must be 60 cards. Sure. Make it easier for... Actually, no, let's... Let's go three Grazers. Grazer is also decent at blocking. They usually play like Sharknado and stuff. Kind of seems reasonable. We have all our colors this game, and Vivian can start providing us card advantage. I think what we do because we're on the play is wait till turn three and then play out a stone coil. It allows us to attack the fairy in two turns, the same, but without over committing to the board again. And then the following turn, I can uh, dirge bat. So I'm gonna shock in here. Okay, they omen. The reason I'm shocking is 
That way we don't shock next turn, so they won't be aware we're going to have a flash threat come in. The mutate on Dirge Bat, like, six mana is a lot for it to mutate on, but it being a body that you use your cheaper mutate spells for is pretty good. Okay, so they have Uro. Fabled Passage will be one spell in the bin for them. So it's pretty decent because next turn we just drop, like end step we drop this, might draw out a counter from them, and then we go Vivian. And then Vivian can start providing some card advantage or play to the board. This suggests to me that they're short lands. We'll flash in a 3-3 here. That's a good follow-up that we can mutate afterwards. This could be a Sharknado as well. They have three mana. So I want to try to get this to six, or uh, so at least that way we can trade with the arrow. See what they value here. Okay, that's fine. Prefer this anyways. It being pro colors is better. No, change your mind. Change your mind. This gives us at least a turn. So even if they conquers death here, we get a token. Um, probably reach. The reason for reach is if they play a flyer, we can block it. They do have a four or five flyer. We're always on hand. So we know we're drawing a boreal grazer. Okay, they shock in, shatter. It's just Aether Gust. Yeah, it's likely Aether Gust on our upkeep. Do it. Um, do we want this? Getting close to Uro. I think we just decline. This plays around Elspeth Conquer's death and Teferi. It's harder for them to deal with. It also can attack through and block on Yorian. We know we have a tap line coming into play. So that allows us to flash in the bat and then potentially go on top. Let's see what they play here. They might just get back the shatter. Yeah. The past is never forgotten. So question is here. Their turn's gonna be shatter. We're going to flash in the bat. Flash in the bat on their end step. I think we just go face, because then I can morph this on top. Yeah, I think we do that. I think we just need to pivot and be the aggressor. growth spiral so we're hoping that they don't have like 
because this is a 6-6 six, six on top, so it would be enough. They can't get back Aether Gust. And this is where the multicolor protection is useful on it. Let me aid your research. They brought in Neutralize. It's a pretty fringe card against us. See if they just bring back Ura. If they get greedy and bring back Ura, it's good for us. Man, Yorion players are slow. You give them a 33% more deck, they take uh, a third as much time to play. Okay, they shatter here. So that's good too, because that's our seventh line. So even if they counter this, I still have Grazer that can and this can mutate on top. Do you have the counter? So we kill Tamio. Oh, the, you know what? They have Aether Gust. So we actually get both of these back into play. This study is over. Um, in case they have a board wipe, we'll probably wait. So they do get to ca cast Uro this turn. I can... So if we kept it the other way, they couldn't have Aether Gusted us. So we wouldn't have had Lethal, but... I think we still go for it there. This looks like Uro's coming out. Puts him up to seven. Okay, so they're tapped out. We get to kill the Uro. Um, my card's engraved. So they can get Uro back. So let's kill Uro. That was not what we wanted. So they could Yori on here. So maybe we should have done it the other way, at least as a 6-6. Six, six. I went with the evasion this time, but they can just get a 4-4. Four, four. We need another Earth threat. Yikes, Agent. I think we're dead here. Yeah. Oops, didn't mean to shock there. Yeah. Yeah, I think I just went back that turn. We shouldn't have gone Aether Gust. Like, we got fell into the Aether Gust. Just going to give Arena a reset. We'll fire up another game. That one's tough. Aether Gust is really timely. And we just drew a lot of lands afterwards. Not getting a lot of our early drops hurt. 
You can see the general idea though of the deck. The problem is shatter. So if we got something like Nethroi, you get back your whole graveyard basically, and it gets allows you to retool. So maybe what we want to do in that matchup is be more aggressive. Let's play first. Yikes. I think we still keep. I'm hoping this isn't a flash deck. Our deck's probably very weak to flash. May want Destiny Spinners. Uh, it's probably Flash. Probably should have mulliganed this hand. We're not going to have a play till four. Teamer Wreck. So it's Team Wreck. Another Aether Guest matchup here. Most of these lists have moved off of. Um... Ooh, they missed a land. So I'm going to go Mari here. That allows us to uh, Star X next turn. They have Aether Guest me. Mystical Dispute. Sure. I'm playing this out, it's cheaper next turn for me to mutate, so it's a better use of my mana. Getting countered again. I'm assuming we're getting wrecked here, literally and figuratively. So probably play this out this turn. Yeah, if we could have snuck one of these under. Again, just trying to be mana efficient. You got another counter? Okay, opt. Next turn, I could snap decks on top. Actually, probably do Migratory Great Horn. You say that, and then they counter everything. Most of them are only playing two to three Mystical Disputes main. Uh, Uro is live next turn. So I need to make this a Chunky Boy. I'm going to get the attack in first. Don't have a counter, don't have a counter, don't have a counter, don't have a counter, don't have a counter. No! And this is kind of the disadvantage of playing these mid-range lists right now. Like, there's so much blue counter-based magic going around.
So this will deal four damage. We can give this double strike as well with the lifelink. So I think what we do, I think I want to take wreck off the table actually. So let's put it under. Get both of these back. Take out the reclamation. You are five mana. So I can attack into Lura, Uro. Or I can just kind of go wild. Hmm. Let's get back the other one in the graveyard. Okay, we have another dispute. No attacks this turn. Next turn, I can start doing it on the Great Horn. Or actually, I can just do it on this again, and then we get back from the graveyard. Probably just go wide. Kind of want this just to start shooting at Uro. can get it back so I don't think I have interest here we'll take the six this can gain us five life back next turn okay we have a second wreck no play Throw a bunch of damage in on them. Okay, no counters. We got through most of their counters, which bodes well. Get back both of these. Take out the reclamation. Go get a land. Um, so three, we just put this into play tapped, draw a card in case we get a two drop. Just play this out. All right, team opponent, how do you beat this? All right, you got a 6-6. Six, six. I have Godzilla. Um, so I think we just block with the Grazer here. I don't want to kill it because then they gain another three life and get a draw. This is six power, 18, 22, 27 attacking. Let's mm. attack with everything. So 
I can do this on top. Just kill that. So they put two on there. There wasn't anything worthwhile to get out of our graveyard. Um, so in this matchup, Umari's probably not the best. Um, probably just want these Mikthas those and these remorse Vivian's also so they usually bring in Storm's Wrath and they'll have Aether Gust I may want another gem razor actually so probably cut down a couple bats cut down the grazers And probably Necromanther yeah I cut you down go up a viv this can deal with the sharks which isn't bad do like agonizing remorse fiend artisan can get pretty big now we're probably okay um, you can at least deal with Uro, but maybe we differentiate. Actually, you're pretty bad. Let's go Vivian. Let's go up another bat. Worst case, bat's something we could flash in. They have Dragonfire for that smaller stuff. I don't know if they keep in Dragonfire versus us. They probably switch it to Aether Gust. Yikes. Ah, let's try it. Two turns to draw land. We can mutate onto this, it'll be good. One more turn to draw land. They want to eat their gust this, it's fine, it'll go to the bottom. We could this turn, we would have Agonizing Remorse. This is the turn you can try to pick off one of their turn three wilderness. So it's likely Growth Spiral. No Growth Spiral. Okay, so they have Aether Gust in hand. Perfect. So I'm actually going to Agonizing Remorse here and just play this out for one. Yikes. So they have an Essence Scatter, they have an Aether Gust. The rest of their hand's pretty bad. I'm not going to let them use their mana this turn. Mind you, could have done this to get the Essence Capture out. Do this. I know it's going to get countered. Just see which option they want to go with. Okay, they go Mystical Dispute. So here... Make it seem like I screwed up. So they can Aether Gust here. Just want to get these spells out of their hand. We can do this chip damage into them. They're also missing line drops.
Probably should have done this before combat, but in case they have like uh, Scorching Dragonfire or something. So I'm trying to get it to where I can have. Okay, so they have wreck. That's actually solid. So it's not the most mana efficient, but I want to get this explosion out of their hands. While they still can't cast it, that gives them the option to refill. Double explosion. So they have answers. So I think we just get rid of Aether Gust here. Because if I draw a land, I can Starix onto the Stone Coil, and then they can't. Um... It's pro multicolor, so they can't deal with it. If they only had like one explosion, we would have taken the explosion out of their hand. Here we're just trying to prioritize getting our threats through. I might still just drop this down as a 6-6. Six, six. Forty percent chance of drawing the land. 11 of that is untapped, or 11 of that is tapped. They're holding up one mana. Alright, let's just cast the Starix. Now we're probably far behind. We needed that land this turn. If we drew the land, we would have been okay. This might be Opt. Second Reclamation. It's a whole lot of damage coming through. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So X equals nine. They could take us off the Starix. Probably dead. Needed that land. Didn't hit that land. I think we want Paradise Druid in the deck. Just another way to get ahead on mana. It also being hexproof could be reasonable. Let's see what they do here. Looks like they're going after the Starks, which should bode well. Probably want another gem raiser as well if this matchups probably do some tweaks after this is this just dragon fire okay I think just mutate here and then attack in.
Mutate gets us the land. So if you put it over, it still keeps all the counters. It's pearl multicolor. Um, let's get another lock source. So we can still get Aether Gusted. Arena crashed on us and we still and had to reset the machine. Aye, Furries and Boror. So they are playing it. That sucks. So most of the lists have gone away from Brazen Borrower. It coming back is kind of rough. This player is slow. So we're probably dead. But we're gonna make them kill us and run out of time. We're up a game anyways, so they do have to beat us for game three. We didn't see Storm's Wrath out of them, so I might lower my curve a bit to get under their counters. These dirge bats have just been stuck in our hand. There might have been math to calculate if we were dead to an explosion, but chances are if they have explosion, we're dead to explosion anyways. We had an opening to draw the land, we didn't. It's 12, 19. Thirteen, nineteen. They need one more for twenty. That's an explosion. So if we blocked, we would have survived, but oh well. Um, let's lower our curve here. You mutate for cheaper. Let's get rid of these bats. Go down a grazer. Um. You bring back stuff, you're probably fine. Let's get rid of one of you. Snap decks, maybe we get rid of too. You're only three CMC or less. You're kind of like burned in a way. Try it like this, optimize the amount of one drops we can get, or uh, lower drops. Even something early like a Fiend Artisan can play well. I'm gonna mulligan this. Okay, this hand's sweet. Gotta put back a card, so let's go like this. So I'm doing this so I can remorse on two stone coil on three. Mm. Let's do that. See if they shock. Oh, well, they don't have to shock in next turn. 
I'm gonna take this dragon fire out of their hand. Actually, I should have probably left the dragon fire and taken the aether gust. Because at this point, even the opt maybe was a better play. Most of my stuff doesn't die to dragon fire. Mind you, we did lower our curve a bit. Hopefully no counter. Okay. Got a 4-4. Four, four. Wilderness Wreck? No Wilderness Wreck. Let's see what we have here. Night Pack Ambusher. Okay. If we draw land, I might just go Nethroy. If we could sneak it in. Um, this is better card advantage, but this protects better. Doing this before we attack, just to see. Because Vivian means I need to play back, and then I'd have to potentially trade my Stone Coil to keep her alive. Same idea. Okay, that resolves. Let's go Vigilance. I call and Decoria answers. If they want to attack into Vivian, they can now. So they have to send both into Vivian to kill her. Sick. Got there. And then we could have just morphed on top and then got stuff back from our graveyard if needed. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. I think I want to try with Paradise Druid in here. I think that's the next test. Hey, we got four pips for winning. Not bad. So let's get rid of you. I haven't been crazy about the bat, to be honest. You're at least a cheaper mutate, so I like that. Even these haven't been that good. And then that lets us fix our mana base a bit. Go pretty much so let's go temple here and then paradise druid and then another aegisaur or a gem razor sideboard wise i think we're still good here Maybe another Fiend Artisan. This gives us more hits for the smaller stuff. Gives us more ramp as well. Let's try this out. Just gonna try a best of one. Oops, meant to do ranked. Let's just see how this works out. I think doing that because we don't have any of the cost reducers that you normally play, like um, Regisaur or the blue one. I think we keep this. So 
a Yorion deck. So I'm going to do this on one. Depending on what we draw. If we draw another Lion that I can guarantee you uh, playing out Umari on curve. Grixis. Okay. Um, that means no to fairy to bounce our stuff. Do want the land now. Do want the land. Did not get the land. We wanted the land. So I can go Necro Panther on top. Okay, since we missed the land here, I'm just gonna go like this. That brazen borer. Why do they always have brazen borer? And agents. Is this like Sultai? Uh, reanimator kind of style? ETB. So you should play this deck if there's a lot of Brazen Borrowers going around. We haven't seen as much of it lately. That's why I finally wanted to give this a shot. Uh, there's not like a team or adventure style deck. Titan's Nest. That's scary. Okay, so... Play out this. Mutate on top. They are going to cast the Agent of Treachery. They are going to steal something of mine. Doesn't bode well after keeping it in hand. Paradise Druid already looking better here, so this is at least one thing they can't steal. Uh, next turn, I can Aegisaur to blow up this Titan's Nest. Okay, Ruga. They didn't hit anything. Oh yeah, you're four mana. You, you mutate for three. Not much in the graveyard either to get back. Okay, land is good. Land lets me kill Gyruga the following turn. We had another green, it would have been good. I can do this on top, but I'm afraid of getting brazen borrowed again, so I'd rather not. Our life total is still pretty high. They lose three life and we gain three life the next time we mutate. Okay, I go Yorion. It's gonna get the Yoyorga train going again. Dayurda. Yayor what a these names are ridiculous this set.
hit what they hit from us. We can do Great Heart or Aegisaur. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we could hit a land. Fiend Hunter. So three CMC or less. This doesn't really do much. So I can do you and then play out Fiend Hunter as well. I can do you at instant speed and kill something. I think we just do this. Train him for three, gain three. Then play out Fiend Artisan. It's a four four. It's just a blocker here. They can attack for ten in the air, but we've gained a lot of life this turn, this game. What's even mutated on this? <laughs> so if we draw a land, I can flash this in on top, become a 3-3, three, three, burn them out that way. Actually, now that they are out, we can't. I'm just afraid of Brazen Borrower. We've assembled such a beautiful Aegisaur. Tory roots actually okay. Gets us our land. So if I do this, I can do that, but then it gets us pretty low. With so I have I'd have one trigger off the mutate. So it'd be four times that it's mutated, so it takes him down four, but then I, it's only a three three when it attacks in, so I'm down a point, but that means I have to tap um, it like that. So I think we just play it safe this turn. Should still be alive. How did that do eight? It enters, it checks for each time you've mutated. So it would have, we mutated four times. So it would have been, oh, I had two of it mutated on there. Yeah. Good call, good call. I, I wish you could see like what's on there. Okay. So the deck uh, worked out pretty good. I do like the Paradise Druid edition. I do think this is the direction we want to take it going forward. Because, like, really, these are three drops in the deck. This is kind of weak. So maybe we get rid of this. And then play... Like, what's mutate? What do we have options of? Because this still mutates for four. Where this mutates for four, and this gives us tokens. We'd have to switch up our mana base a bit. Like, Bat was pretty expensive. What do you do? Each opponent sacks a creature, discards a card, counters I don't care about. You Anthem the team, but we're not really aggressive. Like, you could return permanence to our hand. Yeah, maybe we try... The gain life's also probably not terrible. Maybe we try these Cub Wardens instead. There was never really a time we want. And because, like, I don't care about bringing these back, and these are kind of lackluster. 
So maybe we do it like this. And then make these godless shrines. That gives us enough white. Still have a lot of untapped sources. Yeah, I like this shell. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this one up. Uh, I'll probably play some more games in the future. Uh, we got with this deck, I'm gonna keep working on it. It's a fun take. I was playing a lot of Boros cycling, so come back with another one probably tomorrow. Um, been working on a couple decks. Got uh, Golgari Henge and then Black White Knights. Not crazy on the he the knights list, but this one was pretty fun when we played it. Basically, just get fatties out and um, hinge them up. I think we want four fiend artisans, but still working on some of these lists. Just seeing, I really like Vivian, so I want to play more green. Um, but just trying out different shells. Probably play Yorion Elementals as well. Haven't done a Yorion deck on the channel, mostly because they're slow to play and they drive me nuts. But cool wrap this up thanks everyone for stopping by uh if you want missed any part of the video we'll have it up on youtube probably tomorrow uh as always uh thanks for your support and stay safe out